we're going to welcome our next live guest. We've got Ann Rinke here, president of the TIA, and one of my favorite persons to meet in person, because we met last or two weeks ago now at TIA conference. And thanks for joining us. Hey, Kaylee. So good to see you again. Great to see you as well. I know that we had an absolute blast at TIA. I had a great time being at my first industry conference. I'm sure that you had a great time hosting your first TIA conference and the first TIA conference back in three years. So let's just dig right in. What was your absolute favorite part about San Diego? Okay, so Kaylee, I'm going to ask you as many questions as you ask me because I, I want to hear your take on it as well. Um, you've been interviewing people for gosh knows how long and not meeting them in person. So I, I hope it was a thrill for you to meet them live and in the flesh. Um, to me, that was the highlight, actually getting to see people in person that I've been Zooming with for two years. And I, I hope you agree with this. I think the energy was off the charts. People were so happy to be together. And, you know, it's an intangible. Having people come together, there's actually, I think, more ability to do business, to have brainstorming sessions, to be creative. So top, top, top energy of the event itself. I can go through my top three, but I'll start with that. What was yours? I definitely think that the energy was there as well, but I'm going to say that my favorite was Mike Riccio's custom jacket. <laughs> just going to talk about that. But in, in all seriousness, it was a really good learning opportunity for me because I, I went to a bunch of the sessions, a bunch of the learning labs, and it was really good for me to kind of sit down and take this glance into the 3PL side of things because it's something that I'm not super familiar with. So it was, it was really, really awesome to be there and to get all of those learning opportunities. And I hope that a lot of the conference attendees kind of felt the same way. And you guys had representation from so many different companies, both in those learning labs, in the panels that you you guys had and on the exhibit floor as well. What was kind of the feedback that you got from those who participated in the event? Well, when you have a, an exhibition and a conference, you're really hoping to, to find out that your exhibitors got the ROI that they were seeking. And I think I talked to almost every exhibitor who said, I said, what is your, your version of success here? Did you achieve it? And almost unanimously, they said, we absolutely did. There were plenty of times where their booths were mobbed by people. And these are folks that didn't know about a particular solution, didn't know about a particular technology, didn't know that there was a fit for them that could improve or scale up their business. So that seemed to be pretty rewarding for all of them. And, you know, one thing that I would suggest is there's a heck of a lot of optimism about this industry. You know, you just heard about the spot market softening and freight volumes going down slightly, but there's still a heck of a lot of business out there. And there are a lot of people who want to continue to, to grow their business or to enter into a freight brokerage. And it's so nice to it's so nice to see you. I, I did not make it out to TIA. I will I will next you. time though. Yeah. Well, I missed you guys out there as well. It's uh, I can't wait to get back out there. I'll be in Northwest Arkansas though for for certain uh, with the future supply chain. But um, so, what was the overriding thing? Now you talked about a lot of optimism that was there. What are the what is the optimism? What are they looking for? What what is causing that optimism right now? A lot of people are cautious. Uh, I like to be optimistic, but I'm looking at it going, mm, I'm not sure exactly which way it's going to be. And I think it's too early for a lot of people to call, though a lot of indus signs are going towards a freight re recession. Uh, what's the optimism? Where's that coming from? Gosh, well, I think a couple of things. First of all, the technology solutions that provide the freight brokerage an ability to be agile, to work well with their customers. I mean, mm. It, it really, the it's almost becoming a high tech space. In addition to becoming a freight brokerage, there's a really a lot of tech around that that makes uh, I think our our members feel nimble and feel like they can handle what the future holds up. Now, yes, you're absolutely right. The people are feeling cautious. They're not sure 100 percent what's going to happen. We all have heard there will be a, a slowdown by the end of this year. But to the point that your your speaker made the last session, you know. We think, too, that e-commerce is, sure. is by and large here to stay. And so that means that our members can tend to benefit from consumer spending. And, yes, it will go down some, but we're still on a high of a five-year average, right? Mm -hmm. So, yes, year over year we're down. But, you know, if you look at over five years, we're still doing exceedingly well. So I think that's part of it, the technology, the feature of it. And, and then the fact is we think that this space is, is always viable. Absolutely. Something that really 
my mind about this GIA conference was so many people were new entrants to the industry that were there. They were in a small brokerage or they worked for a small carrier or they have a small fleet and they were really kind of there to gain a lot of knowledge but also make a ton of connections to try and grow their business. Can you talk a little bit about what these newcomers look like when it comes to the TIA's perspective of welcoming them and then what their attendance means in terms of membership rates and how that kind of helps drive membership to the association? Sure. So we had the largest number of non-members attend this time around. And I think it's because what I said about optimism, people are very interested and excited about this industry and they want to learn more about it. You know, I had a conversation with a guy who just joined and he said, I, I came to this conference and now that I'm leaving it, I realize how far behind I am, meaning he realized there is so much for him to know, to grow, to pick up. And he appreciated the fact that he was exposed, whether it's how do you sell, right? We have Dr. Jim Kenny who just does a fabulous job. How do you how do you sell to your customers? <laughs> or whether it's what are the legal pitfalls that you need to be aware of? I mean, some of these things you don't intuitively think about. You just think about, well, I need a phone and I need customers. Well, how do you grow that business and how do you protect that business? So I think that they appreciated that. And then what we also tried to do was provide insights into trends for the future, like automation, for example. No one knows where that will end up, but we wanted to have a session on that so people are thinking about that what should our position be going forward yeah so and let's let's follow that a little bit one of the trends that's out there right now obviously is is when we look at our other tender rejections right in in sonar the tender rejections are going down and those are contracted loads not being rejected by those big enterprise carriers right that's mainly what's drawing that and so and what's happening there is there's less and less uh, optionality out there. There's less and less uh, uh, spot freight that is out there. And you see those rates kind of coming down, right? So how does the newcomer, the new uh, 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 3PL, the new inter intermediary break into that cycle where they've got some of that contract freight to really help sustain them through this type of stuff? Yeah, you're a hundred percent right. So how do you how do you develop those relationships? Yeah. And it's harder than you think it is. I mean, it's it's part of it is yes, having a phone and having gumption, but also part of it is how do you establish the niche that you're in? How do you make it how do you persuade those potential customers that you're a better fit for their business? And so I think there's a lot of creativity that goes into that, but it's also a lot of just um you know, here's where I made a mistake. Here's mm. what you should learn from the mistakes that I made. Mm -hmm. And it's the technology, I'm sorry, but it, it, it's the technology. We were talking to Ryan Schreiber about that a little bit earlier and some other people as well uh, Jeff, mm -hmm. at, at Shipwell. The technology allows them to do that, right? And, and, and really exactly focus right. on that uh, added value of the personality and taking care of things, right? Yeah, and you know, I don't think that the the industry is the wild wild west by any stretch of the imagination, but mm -mm. there's a heck of a lot of stuff happening, right? Sure. And they're, they're they're already established companies that are looking to 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 go into different parts of the business to to establish their tech presence. Um, and so I, I feel like th there's so much vitality in the industry. This is not a staid industry where it's segmented out rigidly and, and you know we all can expect what's going to happen. I think that there is so much fluctuation and so much dynamism, which, you know, quite frankly, I think that's great. I think that's great for you. I think that's great for us and, I, and, and hopefully for the future of, of the consumer because we're really pivoting to make sure they're needs are met you know Exactly. We can't. Stagnation just leads to comfort and then nothing changes. Yeah. And I want to ask about going forward for next year's conference now. I'm sure that you guys are already in the planning process. What's one thing that you're going to take out of 2022 and push it into 2023? All right. Well, we're going to separate the learning labs so that you can actually hear everybody. I don't know, Kaylee, you had that experience, but there was a little bit too much going on at one time. So yes, that's going to be one of the things that we, uh, one of our takeaways too. I think the other thing is um, sometimes some of the, the exhibitors want to get off the floor and actually take people out to dinner. And we have so much of a, a pack schedule. So we're looking to, to find ways where there can be some flexibility where people can actually take their, their clients out or take prospective clients out. And, and so not feel like they're restrained and constrained by the, you know, the schedule. So that's one of the other things we're looking at yeah give them that flexibility to rub elbows and uh that's and right. network especially right now right just coming back into this that's that's the name a lot of a lot of it right is is getting to know each other and people uh excellent excellent stuff i can't wait to be there next year i know well we'll I have to make it down to orlando next year 
Yeah, Kaylee, are you gonna bring him? It's up I'm to gonna, you. I'm gonna, I'll pack you in my suitcase. I think that he'll fit in my carry-on because I'm not paying for a checked bag. We know that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I never do that either. <laughs> All right, and thank you for joining us today. Great to have you as always, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, guys.